All right. Well, Trish, that's the GoPro. It has to sit a little lower on the dash. These are all important considerations, you know? Like, for instance, because this is an F450, let me turn the AC down. If the camera's there, will it be able to see the dog in the back? Now we're talking about something I can relate to. <laughs> So you got the so, bowl. I got the bowl because that's the first step. <laughs> wow. How you doing, Mark? Are you okay? It's pretty cool. Is it? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's a beast. It's a bit rougher. It is. It is a bit rougher. I'm gonna be interested to see what it how it toes. That is crazy. I'm gonna do it again. We're gonna do it again. Just so I can see it. Hey, it's Mark and Trish. Hey, Mark and Trish, how are you guys doing? Good, how are Good. you? Good. Okay, this is a very special video and not just because I'm sitting in my dream truck, the Ford F450, which I can hardly tell you without blushing, but also because we have a very special guest in this episode, JD from Big Truck, Big RV. Trish and I connected with him and we had a Bluetooth conversation in his 450 in our old F250 as Trish and I were headed to the dealership. At that time, uncertain which direction we would go. So we're excited to share that with you. We dive into five questions with JD and you can check out the entire conversation on his channel. But for this episode, we decided to focus on what are the differences between the F350 and the F450. There's lots going on in this episode with Carson and I going to pick up the truck, us preparing to get the F250 traded in, and then of course preparing for the new RV, which you're gonna see next Sunday. So let's not wait any longer. Let's jump right to inside the cab as Trish and I are driving to the dealer, connecting with JD, just wrapping up a conversation around what comes first. You buy your truck or your trailer before we compare the 350 to the 450. Okay, so the three things I just got out of that is you can look for your truck and trailer in tandem. I like that. I like that a lot. I over, would just wait to pull the trigger until you yes, know what you're towing. So you don't have to make a decision overnight. And then don't compromise your safety. Absolutely. Those are some really great points. And I suppose when it comes to an F450, if you want to buy that first, you're not compromising anything. <laughs> but okay, price. we can see where Mark's mind is. <laughs> but maybe you should tell us, JD, what are the pros and cons of a 350 over a 450? So there are a lot of pros and cons of each over each other, actually. In the terms of Ford, if you were looking at a new truck, a Ford F350 is currently going to have TPMS, or Tire Pressure Monitoring System, on board the truck, whereas an F450 currently doesn't have that option, even though it's said to be an option that will be included on the 2020 F450. That being said, you know, the F350 has some really nice perks to it in terms of what options you have later. For instance, you're going to have a standard 17-inch wheel on an F350, which means Whenever it comes time to buy tires, whether you want a snow tread tire, whether you want an off-road tire or kind of an all-season tire, your options open vastly. You have so many choices of tire sizes and tire options with an F350. With an F450, you're gonna only really have one tire option. That's gonna be a 22570 19.5 since the 450 has a commercial size wheel. Okay, so let's talk about the ride uh, difference between the 350 and the 450. How much stiffer is the 450? So the only real difference in suspension on a 450 versus a 350 is that the 450 is going to have really a different front spring. So the front spring assembly is going to be a 7,000 pound rated spring versus a 6,000 rated spring on a 350. In terms of rear suspension, they're virtually identical. There's really not any difference. Now, where the ride difference comes in is the tire thickness and the tire size. Because the tires themselves are more of a robust tire and it's a G-rated commercial tire, you don't get the flex in the sidewall that you would get with a standard 17-inch tire that you would get on a normal 350 dually. So a lot of people don't realize that part of your suspension and part of what makes your ride comfortable is the sidewall of the tire acting as a spring. 
when you put commercial tires on a vehicle, all of a sudden you lose that shock absorbing feel that the tire gives you and the ride is gonna be, if I had to put a percentage to it, it's probably 20% to 25% uh, more firm or harsh than a 350 dually. Okay, so that's pretty significant and it certainly sounds like it's noticeable, but yet you still do it and I believe that you do that for the turning radius and some of the pros that the, the 450 gives you, the turning radius, the increased brakes, the different chassis. So are those, those pros outweigh the cons in your opinion? So in my opinion, the number one pro of a 450, besides just its really great aggressive look because you get that front wide axle on it. On it. And then no, don't even, don't even you start. Don't, you don't, have don't to start, let's not, let's not talk about that, all right? We'll stick to the facts. He loves that, he loves that, okay. okay. If we take the cosmetic side and the man appeal out of it, appeal and we stick to the practical side. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if we stick to the practical side of this conversation, then the reality of the turning radius is, is a game changer. And I have talked to every manufacturer of dually pickup trucks about wide track front axles and putting them on because of the significantly improved turning angle you get. It is a life changing experience when you move from a 350 to a 450 and you realize how you can maneuver such a big truck and it kind of feels like a much smaller truck in terms of maneuverability, it really puts a smile on your face. So those are great points. Okay, I think we might be glossing over the pro of a 350 because I know where you what, what camp you're in, Mark. Yeah, sure. Okay, so JD, maybe you could give us one pro that the 350 has because there is a price difference and so when people are making the decision, what is something that they would love about the 350 over the 450? The 350 is pretty much just as capable as a 450. The towing numbers are so close. What it comes down to is the fact that, A, you're gonna find a lot more 350s than you will 450s. Oh, yeah. um, they're just spread out all over the place. So the 450 is gonna be a very rare truck to find on dealership lots, and if you do, it's not gonna be one that you're gonna see a huge uh, negotiation on. They really like to hold on to them or they like to mark them up or even not really discount them much simply because it's a very desirable truck. So, you know, you're gonna find yourself in a situation shopping for a 450 that you may not get the truck you want with the features you want, but you're settling for it unless you find a pre-owned one that's just in really good shape. Now, that being said, Trish asked, what, is a, what are the real perks of a 350? So 350, not just not just the the one of you know the smoother ride because of the tires, and not just because you know you're going to see more of them, but because you're probably going to find one with every feature you're looking for, and you're going to be able to negotiate the price on it in a much more competitive way versus that of an F450. So big thanks for JD for connecting with us. He really is the authority on trucks in the RV industry as far as I'm concerned. So if you wanna watch the entire conversation with JD, there is a link in the description or you can click right there to watch the entire video. One of the things I learned in our conversation was around do you need a non-commercial CDL for towing over 26,000 pounds? And as it turns out, you only need the CDL if your state where your driver's license is issued from requires it. So Arizona, which is where my driver's license is issued from, does not require a CDL or an, even a non-commercial CDL over 26,000 pounds. But Texas is a state that does. Now, I can still drive through Texas without meeting that requirement because my driver's license is not from there. So that was interesting information because we get a lot of questions about do you need a CDL for over 26,000 pounds. So definitely hop over to Big Truck, Big RV to see the entire conversation. But now, let's go to the cab of this truck for the first time so Trish and I can test drive it. Okay, it looks the same. It Are you same. happy? <laughs> no, it doesn't have a lot of the things that our truck has, including that, which I really like just for the videos. Okay. But, you know, it's not necessarily about that. It's about the gear ratio. Mm -hmm. It's about the turning radius. Mm -hmm. It's about the payload. It's about yep. the towing capacity. And it's about the price. And it's about the price. Buying it correctly. So our goal here for this little test drive is I want to kind of get a sense for the difference in the gear ratio just mm -hmm. by getting out on the highway. But really, there's really two tests that we're here for. One is, how does it steer compared to the F-250? And I give you visuals. Here. <laughs> and how Turn. much stiffer is the ride compared to what we're used to? Those are really the only two things. Other than that, it's just coming down to price. <laughs> wow, it's pretty bumpy, huh? Shaky. Shaky. Is that? Yeah. Like it feels like a tire is out of balance, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, something. Wow, that is. 
that is only like this is not this it? is not smooth. No. I called JD back. JD, is this supposed to shake? It doesn't have any weight on it. That's true. That Wait. Okay, so there's two lanes over there. Yeah, I'm in a turn lane, and there's only two lanes here. I'm gonna make a U-turn. Watch your back tires. Oh. What? Is that you not ridiculous? You just made it? I yeah. thought you weren't gonna make it. I know. That's ridiculous. Okay, so I made a complete U-turn from the center lane with two lanes. I'm stunned. Let me you do it do again. You do have a little bit of space over here Let me do that it again. you went into. Let me, oh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna okay. do it again. I'm gonna do it from. I'm gonna do it right here. I'm gonna here. record it. Okay, you're gonna record from that way. Yes. Yeah, so we're in the middle lane. You see the yellow. You see yellow, yellow, and there's two lanes right there. Okay, ready? Okay. okay. Here we go. Uh oh. Okay, you used a little bit of that that shoulder right there. Yeah. You used a little bit of that shoulder. But our truck can't do that. Really? Now oh, the man. drawback is. I just text JD and I said, dude, this thing vibrates. And he goes, yeah, welcome to the 19.5 inch rim wheel. But what's interesting is we have 20 inch rims. So it's just the stiff sidewall. It's the type of tire. It's the type of tire. Not necessarily just he the size of the rim. He said that squish in the side is what gives you that airbaggy feel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not, there's no up there switches. Oh, good. Let's get this truck. Oh, there's man. So Ted's upset. That's where I was going to put my air horn. Yeah. Dad's realizing that there's no place for his air horn, which is good for me because then we're not going to be upsetting anyone. I'm not going to upset anyone. I'm going to observe no. discipline. Look at this. It has the curb. It has the drain. How? Is it, does it have a drone above it? I Look think at, the... I think the... Um, the 360 cam? Look at that. I think that their camera's below the... Rear view mirror. Look at this. Are you joking me? You sound like that comedian Sebastian. That is, Are this you... is crazy. Now, if you want to try to back it out and do something different, see if I can get a better number, then you guys pay the beat up. You know what I'm gotcha. So, well, I mean, so for instance, say, say you're like, man, I, I, I can't, I can swallow that, but I need five or nine, five or six hundred bucks. up at the dealer at 10.30 a.m. Wow. So you don't spend all day at a dealer unless if you end up buying a truck. <laughs> and if I would have had the time to leave, I would have. Because we got to a point where I was felt close, but I felt mm -hmm. like because we really didn't have time to leave, as much as I would have loved to have left, we would have to come back tomorrow, and tomorrow we have to work on a video, and Sunday we have to release a video. So anyhow, I don't think anyone feels particularly great after leaving a dealer. Um, I think the only way you could really feel good is if you are really patient, and you, like we were talking about this morning, you find a deal, and you're like, that's it, and you get anywhere close to that number. I feel like we got, I don't think we got a killer deal, but I don't think we got a bad deal either. Mm -hmm. And we were able to use an X plan, which is kind of like a friends and neighbors rate. So thank you, Judy. And we were able to apply some other rebates and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so on Monday, we're going to come back and we're trading this truck in and we're going to be picking up the silver F450. Wow. What? So anyhow. I think, you know, there's a lot of things that the truck... <laughs> Stomach is just kind of like <laughs> sinking and... Oh, I thought you'd be more happy because now we can talk about puppies or dogs. <laughs> Wasn't that the deal? Oh, that's the deal. <laughs> One, 
strut. That's a lot of extra resources that we carry around. All right, what do you got there? Leveling blocks? Mm -hmm. We got some rain X. We got the Hensley hitch. And then I've got a container back there of all the tools and that kind of stuff. The thinned out version. Last season when we went to Alaska, we really had a few too many things in the back of here. But now I've kind of streamlined it out to only the Can essentials and right that's there, what I consider right. to be essential. So in that Our toolbox right there is things like, here I'll just show you real quick. You know, things like a bottle jack is right here, extra extension cords, a grease gun, a electric drill, got a strap for towing. I got this light here. This is kind of handy light for doing work. Also keeps things uh, keeps things warm in the winter time. Like I said, I got the the big long wrenches in here. There's the torque wrench down there. What's this? Oh, wow! The Vire pump. Man, that thing's awesome. I did an RV newbies essential video a while back of all the things that we thought were important to take with you on the road. And I said on that video that it would be really handy to have a wrench for every nut and bolt on your rig. I didn't think that was much of an outlandish comment, but man, the amount of people that came back and said, you really expect all these people, especially people who are retired and aren't auto mechanics or RV mechanics to get into all that work? And I said in the comments, no, not really. But if you're stranded on the side of the road, I promise you, in the RV community, somebody's gonna come along that knows how to use those tools. And if you have a problem where you need to remove a leaf spring or make a, a minor repair on your rig and neither of you have the tools you need to crack some bolts, then you're gonna be stuck and you're gonna have to call some service agents to come out with the proper tools. So I personally like to have everything that the rig needs to make repairs to the stabilizers, to the uh, lug nuts on the wheels, to the leaf springs. I mean, I wanna be able to change a bearing and change a leaf spring if I have to. And even if it's not me operating the tools, I wanna have the tools for somebody that has those skills. Uh, same as first aid. You know, the last, I mean, you don't have to be an EMT or a nurse or a doctor, but we have a really good first aid kit because I wanna have the proper items so that if an EMT does come by, and by the way, there's a lot of EMTs that RV, they might just be out on vacation or off duty and they and they roll up on a scene and they say, hey, do you have this, this, and this? I wanna say, yep, hold on, and come back and go, have them go, wow, thank you, rather than like using a Dora Band-Aid. I was just down here going underneath this stuff with my hands and I thought I was pulling out an old sock. Look at that. Look at how disgusting that is. Like any good husband, I gotta go show my wife. Because that's what, that's what we do. We don't fix things, we announce things. Trish? Whoa, can I have a bag of that? Oh, I'll give you $5. Wait, actually, I'll give you $5 on PayPal? Let him. On PayPal. On PayPal. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man and machine day. Carson and I are going to pick up the truck. So we'll go over there. We'll see what Carson thinks of it. And then uh, we'll, we'll bring it back here. And then step one of two. Step one, go get the truck. Step two, Wednesday we'll move. And then Thursday we'll go. Tuesday night we're moving. Tuesday night we're moving? Yep. It's crazy. We're thinking about putting the new rig here so that we have opposing doors and we can move in and everything. Okay, Anyhow, hi. so I'm gonna head to Bartow and go pick up the truck and I'll see you in a bit. Yay! So I am gonna miss some things, like that sunroof. There, wait, it isn't like a... It's a Lariat, but there's a lot of options it doesn't have. And the reason is the MSRP, which stands for Manufacturer Sales Price, basically. It's like what the manufacturer says a car is worth. And it's called the MSRP. And then when you buy a new truck or a new car then you would negotiate from the MSRP of course if you are a very savvy buyer you would negotiate up from the invoice but I'm not that good so I go top-down just stick with what you're capable of so the MSRP of the new truck is actually only a thousand dollars more than this truck okay so we're getting a lot more truck for only a thousand dollars more now, the way that that was accomplished is that it doesn't have the air-conditioned seats, it doesn't have the heat seaters, it doesn't have the remote start, it doesn't have the sunroof, I don't have my upfitter switches. You don't have those? I don't have those. 
Yes. That was a hit. Like that. Like when I looked up there and and I didn't see him, I went like. <laughs> what we are getting is way better turning radius because the F450 is on a different chassis and it has a different front axle. So the front axle, instead of being like this, it's like this. That's why it has these big fenders that go on the front. That's what kind of makes it look mean and big. It's higher up off the ground and it's got a way better turning radius. It's got a, it's got a, it's got a lower gear ratio, which is the 433, which means it's gonna tow heavy weight with better performance. It's got heavier springs in the back and it's got bigger brakes. So I lost some bells and whistles and I gained some efficiency and power and performance. So in my opinion, it was a fair trade. Man, I guess everything's out, but I don't know. I just have that feeling like, like I'm leaving something. You know what I'm leaving? I'm leaving my my sunroof, my moonroof, and my 60 gallon tank, and my Vire onboard compressor, compressor, the Firestone, that's what I'm leaving behind. This, is, this has been a good truck. I'm gonna miss it. One of the things I wanted to check was the bed liner, because they put in the bed liner and the puck system. I guess it's locked. Just look over the top. Oh man, it still smells new. Check it out, the puck system. Why are you sitting back there? I don't know. I'm just getting a feel for car drives. Oh, because you know? this is your, this is where you sit. This is where I sit, right here. Well, well, you know, a seat belt. Let's... Whose idea was it to have a sign seating? Have just... we done that since the very beginning? Yeah. Yeah? Except Tori always got the window. So Tori got the, in season one and two, three, Tori got the window and then you and Caleb switched off. Yeah. And then when Tori went to college, then how did you get the seat behind me? Like, why did you want to sit behind the driver? As Dwight says, Driver always protects his side. In the event of a crash, driver always protects his side first. All right, we're ready to put this thing up, man. I just, I remember season one, putting this up in the F-150. I can just kind of sneak down here and click record and hopefully no one pays attention to the red flashing light. You probably water. stepped in my pee. It's no, water. it's no. water. Calm down. No. Don't be rude. She's not being disgusting. Jeez, oh man. Yesterday you were walking and sneezed all over me because you didn't cover your mouth. Literally, I got showered in his germs. Mom, I need a wipe. I have a job for you. It's actually kind of a cool job. Oh, Can I show you? That's what you do whenever there's a stupid job. No, this is actually a good this one. This is actually a really cool job. You'll really like this one. You see these? Yeah. These are the handles that go in those slots and there's four of them. So it needs to be taken out of this package. And then it looks like they just like clip it. Ah, this is Carson's job. Whoa. Yeah, whoa, whoa, Why? whoa. Why? Anyway, are you able to do that? Yeah. Cool. You might need to read the instructions once you get that thing out. Just read those instructions. These instructions when you have a mind. <laughs> well, that's how your father thinks, but I'm telling you from experience, you best to read those instructions. <laughs> Why? I just, you know, Talk to your mom about it. Here, see those mats? Yeah. Those need to be scrubbed really good. Mm -hmm. You good You good to do that? Like how good? Like a scrub brush, soap, hose, black, shiny. As mm -hmm. shiny as the truck. All right, Carson, how does it, how are they? Oh, that looks pretty good. Nice. You see what we're talking about here is the little clips right there are in place. Nice. Go play some Can't basketball? wait to get a bed cover on this thing. Yeah, you wanna play basketball? You want me to whoop your butt again? Again, I beat you last time. I can't remember. Light it now, go. Go. Oh, the power steering is very All right, are we ready? 